Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to Espresso Press Design. Mary here. Let me get seated. I'm back to my old camera for an experiment. See how it... Maybe it will work better if I'm back to my new operating system, my old new operating system, which is, I guess, one step above where I was instead of two. But that's neither here nor there, I guess. Um, today, we're going to be doing... Um, I'm still working on my wearable art inspiration and um, I'm gonna there will be a few photos in this video to show you my inspiration and um, one came out well one didn't so we're going to do the one that came out well. But let me just go over a few things here. Uh, this paper collection is finally finished. Thank the Lord. Um, I wanted to tell you about, by the way, it's called Love Letters. I wanted to tell you about what you can do to make your wax vellum stronger and then I'll go into the um, project so after you do your wax vellum if you want to make a pocket or an envelope and make it stronger I think it will be fine for an envelope pocket is the one that it might not be strong enough, but I didn't get a chance to try it yet. Um, you just take some acrylic gloss or your matte medium, brush it on the back. You won't lose the transparency. Since it's a pocket, you won't have to feel that crappy tackiness and um, it will give you strength. So I added those reinforcement tips to the original post. In the event someone doesn't want to travel to the blog to um, read them. So, these were my experiments. I'm probably going to go to plan A, which I was just too lazy to do. But in creating the wearable art, let me separate them here to my different types. In creating the wearable art that you see in the photo, hopefully you'll venture over to the blog. To see all the inspiration photos because they're they're really pretty. But they were clay charms, basically. So my first idea was acrylic, of course. And, uh, well, actually my first idea was just inking up the embossing folder. 
and that was kind of an epic fail. So you can see all my things here that have to be cut apart. Um, I mean, I suppose, let me find a, I suppose you could ink the embossing folder, then you would get a raised impression that was Here's the one. <laughs> like this. And you could go over the top with ink. Um, that didn't give me enough color variation as in the inspiration. So second attempt was acrylic. And that was okay. It was so so, you know. But the minute you smear, which in the um, old jewelry was fine because that's what you wanted, but the minute you smear, you're losing some detail. And the inspiration pieces were highly detailed. So I moved on to. Pastel, which gave me a lot more control in the color, but again, <clears throat> and then I spray, and then I brushed over them with gloss, and I shouldn't have. I should have used a spray fixative. Um. There's a nice one. So then, yeah, these ones, I finally, I used a fixative and then a gloss on top of it. But it's still not giving me the look I want. <coughs> Which is... <laughs> To cut out all these little die pieces and layer them on top, which will take a lot of time to do each one individually, which is why they're cut and separated to put on the metallic or the old jewelry if I want them. But I know there's a way to do this with mass making, so that will be the next one. But the ones that did turn out nice were the frames. And I have examples of the frame charms in the photos. The frame polymer clay charms. So since those were the ones that turned out, <clears throat> those were the ones I'm going to show you today. Please, I'm losing my voice already. Oh boy, I had a terrible night and a terrible day. Which I won't go into detail, but... Let's just say I'm having stomach issues. And um, <clears throat> I lost a lot of fluid. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be doing these. And I'm going to show you how to make them real quick. You'll just need some channels, folds, and these are one inch scored in half. So I have black and I have craft. 
Now I first saw this on Shinuki Art, and I'm going to post the link. And it was one of those dumb moments. <coughs> Sorry. Where she uses these to make her specimen slides. And if you're going to find it easier to go, I will post the link to her that video. <laughs> but I was like, that is so cool and like how could I not have thought of that before because this is how I used to always make my pockets is to put channels down the sides um, and then you just go around the rectangle and then cut off your channel as you go so if you put a piece of acetate in the center have a specimen slide in like two seconds. <clears throat> so that's why we're doing these. So you'll need some channels, you'll need some pastels, you'll need some acrylics, whatever kind you use. I have both, but I um. I don't know how many colors left I have left in the bottles, so I pulled out these tubes that have been sitting there for a couple years that I got for my daughter, and she's never used them. And I have two frames already made <clears throat> and embossed, but I'm going to quick make a frame with you here. So basically I just, um, I like the size of these better. I don't know how I screwed up the second time, but I did. So these are about two and a quarter. So you'll need two that are two and a quarter and then the the length is about two and three quarters so I'll just cut off my first one here And if you want to, um, if you want to score those, you can, or if you just fold them down the middle, either way. Okay. Here's my top two. And it doesn't matter because once you emboss those, I'll show you. You don't even see that seam hardly. And this one, the folds a little off. Yeah, sometimes when you score them. I think it's better to just fold them if you can get it folded, but this is cardstock. So then you're just going to take your little corner there.
you want to glue the channels together, you can. And I think I'm going to flip that. So that's not... And if these aren't perfect, it doesn't matter because you'll see in the inspiration photos, they're not perfect. They're made out of clay. Okay. And do want to make sure things are square. That's the problem for me. Either I didn't cut that paper straight or okay. Oh, where did you go? I lost a piece already. Oh well, I'm just gonna have to recut that. Oh no, there you are. Okay. And you just go around in a square. On each side. So I hope everyone is doing okay. Can't even tell you what is well, that one's going to be wonky because I think I, I think I didn't cut it straight. I can't even tell you how glad I am to just be. Semi back to normal. I'm still having one issue with one program that I use all the time. But what I had to do, or what my husband had to do, put it that way. is um, uninstall the new operating system, wipe out the computer, and then reinstall the old system. Or I wish I would have went back to the old system but it's one above where I was instead of like two. And I, my glue is getting clogged, sorry. And I'm like, well, how can like a half of one above still be giving me problems? said, well, actually, I read they're quite different. And in my mind, I just wanted to go back to Kansas where the devil I knew, the devils I knew, 
I could deal with a lot easier than what I've been dealing with. Okay, there's your frame. And then you'll just take that to the embossing folder. Emboss it. I chose two different ones. Basically, I chose this one again because, and I laid it in the folder where I could get pattern the whole way around. Okay. A variety of pattern. So, I guess I'm going to do the pastels on this one because it's easier to get the effect I wanted. And I'll do the acrylic on this one. But kind of what made the frames different than the um, charms is that um, the charms had a lot more detail. And I guess I'm going to try to stick with colors that you can see. So you take your pastel, and because it's hard, well, this is a soft pastel, but because it's rigid, you can get, um, You can get your variety a lot easier. Not sure if I should be using a light green. Because I want a little more contrast. do that. Let's see, blue. Let's keep it in the blues. See, even though you're working with different colors, <laughs> that was like 10 times easier. Smudging with your finger with the acrylic. Where's my violet? Do some violet there. That color works well. Mm. Oops. And uh, you know, I'm. 100% certain if you had an embossing, heat embossing, you'd get this effect in like two seconds. So the frames were kind of, you didn't really have to put this much detail just go around and put different colors in each section. Okay, so that's, I hope I was in frame. So that's your effect. You have to spray it with a fixative 
and my first time I just used a brush and went over it with gloss so then of course everything's smeared so trying to get the variety of color the pastels were easiest but then I had to spray spray and then went over it with gloss after so I could get that polymer clay type finish. Some of those are shiny, which is the two things that attracted me to them were um, the color and the gloss. And that's when you're trying to, um, you know, just use something as inspiration. You don't have to hit all the nails on the head. But as long as you get the key ones. So, what am I going to use? And then another idea was... I don't think I have enough pinks. I know this one shows up. I don't really want to use purple. So I guess I'm going to stick with Alright. I'm going to stick with these three. I don't want to use purple. I don't want to use blue again. Although the turquoise does stick stand up. So smearing with your finger, <laughs> it goes great until you smudge it. So here we go again. Back with the acrylics on the plate. But then these, you know, you just had to get a little bit in each section. It's kind of like they, you know, twisted all the colors of the clay and then pressed it out into a frame. So I'm going to start, keep with my light colors first. And then I thought, you know, maybe it would help if I just stuck with two colors, with my base being a third color. There's not a lot of contrast there, is there? Oh well. So see, when you do it right, the acrylic is probably going to give you the closest, especially when you gloss it. But anyway, these frames, these frames turned out better than everything. And they were, the reason I didn't want to do all those die cuts is I wanted this to be like the old jewelry, which was a pretty quick mass make. You know, and that's what I want. Make all my own ephemera. 
but I don't want it to be take a ridiculously long time. Now I know I could layer all those tiny die cuts for a special card or something. And I wouldn't mind doing that for a special card. Let's see, oh boy. Wouldn't mind doing that for a special card. But when you're making ephemera, you don't want it to take forever. Or, well, I should use the word embellishments, I guess. You don't want it to take forever. Kind of smeared there a little bit. So there's that one. So when you, when that dries and the acrylic advantage, you can brush over it with gloss. And then you're going to get your polymer clay effect. Although I guess some polymer clay can be dull. But most of my examples were pretty glossy. So see, I mean, with the pastels and with the acrylic, I got more what I wanted because I, um, it went faster, but I do know a way that I can mass make using the die cuts, and I will do that next time because I definitely want to achieve the effect because it's so pretty. I mean, it looks like a cross between It looks like an enameled sculpture, dimensional. That's that's what I really liked about it. And again, I know if you had a heat emboss and a stamp, you could heat emboss each of your different colors at a different time. You could, I don't know how you would get the background shiny and then stamp on top. I don't know if you can do that, but it wouldn't matter because you could just gloss over your background after everything was already heat embossed and you would get that effect in like two seconds. But I don't have a heat gun. And I don't have embossing powders. And I really don't know if I want to. That was a nice one. I don't know if I want to invest in that for, you know, I'm not a full time card maker. That was another one I liked. Uh, This one is acrylic, and this one is pastels. Okay, so I wouldn't say it's not that I didn't get it. <laughs> I just didn't get it as well as I wanted to, put it that way. And some of these, like these ones, or when I went over these in the background. Yeah, like that. The background bled through. Oh, that's another thing that reminds me. I get a little piece of paper here. Unlike the old jewelry, where I cut the die cut shapes and then embossed, this time I embossed and then cut the die cut shapes.
because I wanted to, you know, make sure I got what I wanted in the frame. But if you want to really deep emboss, if you don't have a 3D folder, which all my 3D folders are backgrounds with no leaves or flowers, so you're going to want to soak, and I mean soak your paper each side and then you put that in your embossing folder and you will get a much more detailed emboss. So then when you go through your then when you go to die cut things won't get lost or they won't it's not that they get lost it's just that because you're running it through the machine again, there is the potential that it loses some dimension. But you can even do that with 3D embossing folders and they come out absolutely amazing. And it's also a great way to avoid your paper cracking at all. So, yeah, I wanted to say that. I wanted to tell you about the um, how to reinforce your wax vellum. Like I said, all of these are going to get cut out. They're going to get used for something. This one I might leave as it is because that's pretty. But um, And then I am going to do... I'm going to finish one on a little project with the little embellishments, you know, the little bird or the little heart or whatever, and then add it to the gallery. <clears throat> but I just didn't do that yet. But I have to say, I'm so happy to be semi-normal and back to the craft room and technology drives me crazy and it had been many many hours per day redoing all of that so at least you'll learn how to make some quick little specimen slides, emboss them if you want a cute frame. Let me see if I can get my little birdie quickly. I did finally do a little bird. I have a smaller bird. But this is more kind of what they look like in the in the inspiration photos. They have little heart, little bird, little clock, little whatever on the side. And they were adorable. So I am definitely going to keep working until I achieve the look I wanted. And it's probably going to occur with die cuts. And I'll do that next week. I have a way to make them kind of like a master board. Cut them out, I'll gloss them, and then I'll get what I want. Hopefully, quickly. Hopefully quickly for a mass make. <laughs> but at least this will teach you how to do the frames. Simple things to go over them with. You know, if you don't smudge it, the acrylic works the best. But for to get a variety where you want it, like with all those different types of flowers and leaves, pastel work the best. So, okay. You don't always achieve what you want, but the process is in the learning, so... 
it's fun in that regard, regardless. I think that's all. I hope. I hope I was in frame the whole time. I hope I'm not redoing this. I hope it uploads to YouTube and doesn't look like crap and get all pixely and all that stuff. And thank you for your time. I really appreciate you and your subscriptions and your likes and your comments. So have a great day, everyone. See you next time. Bye.